Hi, I'm Rev Myron. I'm a minister through Pathways of Light, and I've been a Course in Miracles student for 40 years. I'm going through the text this year asking Jesus to clarify for me, and then I write from that clarity, and that's what I'm sharing with you today. So let's get started. We're reading A Course in Miracles, Chapter 6, Section 3, The Relinquishment of Attack, and we're on Paragraph 3. The only safety lies in extending the Holy Spirit, because as you see his gentleness in others, your own mind perceives itself as totally harmless. Once it can accept this fully, it sees no need to protect itself. The protection of God then dawns upon it, assuring it that it is perfectly safe forever. The perfectly safe are wholly benign. They bless because they know they're blessed. Without anxiety, the mind is wholly kind. And because it extends beneficence, it is beneficent. Safety is a complete relinquishment of attack. No compromise is possible in this. Teach attack in any form and you have learned it and it will hurt you. Yet this learning is not immortal and you can unlearn it by not teaching it. So there's only one way I feel safe in this life is I let go of the belief that I'm anything less than what God created me to be. I remember my true self. I become gentle and loving, wholly kind and harmless. Knowing myself as God's son, I know God's protection. There will be no desire to defend or attack. So I know what I am to do. I watch my mind for the desire to attack. When I find an attack thought, I remember that it is in my defenselessness my safety lies. If I attack, I teach myself that I need defense and I am weak and vulnerable. If this is true, then I cannot be as God created, <clears throat> as God created me. And to believe I can alter creation is not saying. As Jesus tells us, safety is a complete relinquishment of attack. No compromise is possible in this. I appreciate these uncompromising statements. I know exactly what to do in every circumstance in which I feel unsafe. Rarely do I feel the desire to attack anymore, but I still notice those attack thoughts in my mind sometimes. This can happen when I read the news or consider politics, but I'm aware and grateful for the opportunity to remember the truth. The mind always gives us what we ask for, and I no longer want to ask it for dissension and anxiety. So when I realize I'm attacking anyone in any way, I laugh at myself for my foolishness, and I ask the Holy Spirit to correct my thinking. The following is from my journal. I was still working at the time. I both loved and hated my job. <laughs> Though I loved many things about it, at the same time, it seemed to cause me a lot of anxiety. In retrospect, I understand how important that job was to my spiritual awakening. In overcoming the ego fears and desires that were triggered in the workplace, I healed my mind. Here is something that happened and how I worked through it then. Before I could even begin to journal this morning, I had to clear my mind of something that had been hurting me since yesterday. I woke up with it on my mind, realizing I still had not relinquished it. I went through my process, looking at the thoughts, causing me anxiety, and asking for the atonement. As I did so, I realized that I was relinquishing attack, and I read this paragraph. It was perfect. Here's the process as it happened for me. Yesterday, we had a sales meeting, and there was a new person working for us with whom I had more than one forgiveness lesson. He asked a question that I should have let the boss answer, but instead I jumped in with an answer. I was not really answering his question, but telling him that he hasn't worked there long enough to know everything and just sometimes just say, I don't know, but I'll find out. I didn't use those words, but that's what I was saying. He rightly ignored me and for the real answer and went for the real answer. I immediately regretted my attack on him and wished I'd kept my mouth shut. 
this problem I have with this man and my reaction to him bothered me all day. I was still asking for healing last night before I went to bed. But the thing is, I wanted to be healed of my anxiety, not the problem. This morning, I noticed that I was still exhibiting signs of anxiety. For instance, I woke up at exactly the moment I wanted to wake up, and I started my writing with plenty of quiet time. I should have been happy, relaxed, and, and uh, taking advantage of this time. But instead, I was so anxious that I would not get everything done and worried about forgetting something. I knew I needed to take care of this before I went any further. I started watching my thoughts, and the first thought I noticed was that from now on, I was going to keep my mouth shut when this man talks. Holy Spirit told me that was not the problem, and so it wasn't the solution. I waited for more and realized that I would not have to keep quiet if I allowed my mind to be healed. A healed mind is gentle and does not attack. So I asked for the problem so that I could also ask for the solution. I saw that I had felt threatened ever since he came to work here. I know he will take my job one day and that's fine. After all, I don't want to work here forever and it is the kind of job that takes a while to grow into. I'm glad that my boss had the foresight to hire him early so he could learn the ropes. Also, I'm grateful because he has taken over some of the hard work I used to have to do. It would seem to be a perfect solution, except that he does such a good job that I feel threatened. I don't really think I'm going to get fired, but I feel like I'm not as important to the company. Once I admitted this to myself, the thoughts began to rush through my mind. I think that I am what I do, and I think that my worth is established by my value to the company. I've always been secure in knowing that I would be very hard to replace, and maybe that's no longer true. My ego projects these beliefs, and I see the problem as this interloper with the gall to come into the company and start doing a really good job immediately. <laughs> it is good just to get all these feelings out into the open and see what's really happening. It's a relief to see that the problem isn't really this man, but my own mistaken beliefs about who I am. Holy Spirit, who am I? I know my worth is not established by what I do, but by God in my creation. And I'm grateful to remember this. I looked at my fear of loss. I not only fear my loss of the loss of my value to the company, but also the loss of my job. What if I did get fired? I fear the loss of my income, my home, my new car. As I think about this, I realize that this is a real fear in my mind that I have not looked at. I know it's not supposed to be true, so I tell myself it's not true, but really, I see the fear right there in my mind. I look with the Holy Spirit and ask that my mind be healed, but he wants me to see the rest. So I see that I'm also afraid to say that all I want is to wake up, that waking up is my only purpose. I want to say that my purpose is not to earn a living or be the best employee in the world. My purpose is to wake up, but I'm afraid to say this because what if it's a one or the other kind of thing and I really do lose my job so that I can wake up. I know what this is. It's ego belief that I have reason to fear God. It's a belief that God wants my sacrifice. I think of the Old Testament story of the guy who put his son on the altar and was going to sacrifice him to God. And at the last moment, he got a reprieve. Is this what God wants me to do? Put my job on the altar and sacrifice it to prove I want to wake up? What if there's no last minute reprieve? I say I want only the will of God in my life, but could pain and suffering be the will of God? Is ego trying to confuse me again? I waited to see if there was any more ego thoughts about this situation. Nothing else came. So I've looked honestly with the Holy Spirit and felt the fear. Not comfortable, but it needs to be done. I was finally ready to ask for the atonement. None of these thoughts are true. But that doesn't mean they're, they are without effect. These fearful thoughts lead directly to projection and attack. I attacked the man in question and I attacked myself and I attacked God. 
No wonder I failed also. So I've asked for and accepted the atonement, and now I'm testing the waters to see who I really am with this. I don't want to kid myself about the level of my acceptance. I know I did my best, but I need to be honest about what that is. So I did the acid test. I visualized putting on the altar my dearest desire, knowing it will be fulfilled. What is that desire? I try it out. God, I want to wake up. I want to wake up more than be respected and admired. I want to wake up more than I want a job, home, and car. I want to remember who I am and remember you. I want to remember what it feels like to love unconditionally. And I want to remember what it feels like to be one. That is what I want. And it is all I want. My commitment passed the first test. As I'm not reluctant to make that statement. I did feel a shadow of fear cross my mind. And I asked that my mind be held of even the slightest belief that I want something else, that the world has anything to offer me that compares to the peace of God. Holy Spirit, I remain open and willing to see any belief in my mind for which I need the atonement. If this is not done, then I'm willing to do it. No more hiding behind my projections. I don't want to teach attack ever again. Thank you so much for joining me in this reading. I hope that you found it helpful. If you did, then please like it. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe. And I'll be back tomorrow with another reading. See you then.